Alright guys, it's been 11 days since our last championship transfer rumour roundup and as a result plenty has gone on in that time, all of which will be covered in today's video. We've got an abundance of done deals to go over and of course plenty of transfer rumours which are floating around the championship right now. The other day we had the championship fixture list released for the new season which really builds the hype ahead of the next campaign. But of course the focus of today will be on transfers. Let's first of all dive into some done deals. We've seen Hull City goal Keeper Ryan Alsop completing a move to Birmingham, and I have seen some reports that Birmingham have paid anywhere from 800k, potentially up to a million for the shot stopper. From a Hull perspective, I think that's a decent deal they're getting there if that amount of cash has come in for Allsop. Another exit we've seen from Hull City is Ozan Tufan. He has moved back to Turkey, completing a move to Trabzonspor for an undisclosed fee. Definitely a player that will need to be replaced. Scored 10 goals and got two assists for the Tigers last season. Quite a popular player within the Hull City fan base. Definitely capable of being a game changer on his day. His output will definitely need replacing next season. Sticking with Hull, we also saw them completing a deal for Ryan Giles. We did expect this deal to go through eventually, but it has all since been agreed and he will be returning to the Tigers next season now on a permanent basis. I definitely don't think that Hull fans have seen the very best of Ryan Giles in a Hull City shirt as of yet, but as he's previously showcased at championship level from his loan spells with Cardiff and Middlesbrough, there's definitely a whole lot of untapped potential there and thinking that in a new setup with a new manager, you can't help but feel like there's more to come from him next season for Hull. We saw Coventry completing a deal for Lewis Binks, who spent the last season on loan with Coventry. And another deal for the Sky Blues was them completing a deal for Jack Radoni. Really a big fan of this sort of transfer, obviously. Part of a struggling Huddersfield squad last season, but definitely one of the brighter sparks in that side that was ultimately relegated. Five goals, three assists. But that doesn't quite paint the picture of how influential he was at moments of last season with Huddersfield. It's been reported that Coventry paid a fee of anywhere from sort of 3.6 to 3.8 million and for that sort of price range I think they're getting a decent deal here especially how it looks with Callum O'Hare heading out of the club Rodoni looks to be that sort of natural replacement there we've seen Coventry being really sensible and quite savvy in the transfer market in recent windows and I think this is another example of that sort of business. We saw Jan Valery completing his deal to Sheffield Wednesday. That was a transfer rumour that we had touched on in previous videos but it's since been confirmed. Sunderland completed the deal for Simon Moore. You'd imagine the 34 year old will be coming into the Stadium of Light as a backup option. We won't be seeing Jack Harrison in the Championship next season for Leeds United as the winger has agreed to join Everton on loan once again. The 27 year old spent last season on loan at Goodison Park where he contributed three goals and three assists in the Premier League. Mark Rocker, another player who won't be featuring for Leeds United next season. He spent the last season on loan with Real Batiste and the Spanish midfielder has since made that transfer permanent. Plenty of teams were interested in Josh Murphy, but it's Portsmouth who have won the race for his signature, obviously. Oxford really keen to keep him around, especially after the playoff final heroics from the end of last season, but couldn't agree a deal with him in the end. And it's Pompey who have swooped in for his signature. 29 years old, eight goals four assists in league one last season a player who has plenty of experience previously of having played in the championship his last few stints at this level didn't really go to plan obviously that move to Cardiff for big money the loan spell to Preston didn't really work out for him either make no mistake about it though he is a player with a point to prove and in an environment like Portsmouth you'd hope they'll be able to bring the best out of him Non-league midfielder Ruben Swan, another player who has completed the move to Fratton Park. And as has former QPR goalkeeper Jordan Archer. You'd imagine he'll be coming into Portsmouth as a backup option there. Stoke have dipped into the European market and have signed Eric Bocat. The French left wing back will be coming over from Belgium, where he's coming off the back of a good season. I'm excited to see him in the championship. We knew that Wes Fodringham was going to be on the move this summer upon his contract at Sheffield United running out. And he's since completed the move to West Ham. He'll be going in there as a backup goalkeeper, no doubt. QPR signed French goalkeeper Paul Nardi, who's coming over from Ghent. The 30-year-old has a decent amount of experience that he will bring to QPR next season. Didn't play a whole lot last season in Belgium, missed the majority of that campaign with a leg break. But he'll be looking to recapture his best form at QPR next season. It's been well documented that Derby County have been after Ben Osborne and that deal has since been confirmed. Former Nottingham Forest and Sheffield United man certainly has plenty of experience at championship level and I think he's a nice addition into that Derby squad. Play a couple of different roles as well which is always handy. Burnley have signed Dutch fullback Sharandi Shambo from PSV. In recent transfer windows obviously Burnley 
have had quite a bit of success with scouting around the European market and it looks as if they'll be going down that route once again for this summer. And we've seen Watford midfielder Ishmael Kony joining Marseille. The deal being worth around 12.5 million euros plus add-ons to come Watford's way as well so the club will be banking a decent chunk of change for him. From last season Kony was definitely one of Watford's most technically gifted players. He had an absolute blinder when he came to Deepdale last season when Watford absolutely wiped the floor with Preston and definitely a midfielder with the ability to step up to one of the big leagues. I'm quite excited to see how he gets on in France. Definitely a player that Watford will miss for next season though. But for that sort of money, you can't really be turning down that fee. But there are some of the recent done deals which have gone through in the championship. Now without any further ado, let's jump into the rumours. The first big transfer story we have to touch on is Jaden Philogene, who's now been linked with a move to Barcelona of all clubs. Now, it's no secret that the 22-year-old has been attracting interest from plenty of Premier League clubs in recent weeks. You've got the likes of Tottenham, West Ham and Everton who have all seen linked with the Hull winger recently but the latest club to join the race to sign him is none other than Barcelona. Now don't get it twisted Philogene was one of the best players in the championship last season. 12 goals and 6 assists in just 32 appearances. A game changer on his day for Hull. But with that being said is he at the level to make an impact at a club as big as Barcelona? I'm not so sure. I do think at this stage of his career, probably the best thing for him if he is going to leave Hull would probably be to go to somewhere like a mid-table Premier League club maybe, where he is going to get that regular first-team football and at Barcelona there'd obviously be a lot of competition for places. A bit of a kicker with the Barcelona interested as... A bit of a kicker when it comes to the Barcelona interest as well is that they want to sign him on loan, which could be a bit of a sticking point for Hull, obviously. Barcelona aren't in the best financial position right now, so they're looking at free agents or how they can craftily negotiate some loan deals. If they were to sign Philogene on loan, it would be with the view to then make it permanent, but from a financial aspect, from Hull's point of view, You'd imagine that they'd much rather either keep him around or sell him for a sizable profit this summer. I'm not going to lie though, it would be a lot of fun to see him in a Barcelona shirt, but with some Premier League interest there as well, I'd imagine a move to the Prem would be more likely for Philogene. It looks as if Sheffield Wednesday are closing in on a deal for Jamal Lowe. As of recording, it appears as if Lowe is having his medical at Hillsborough and looks as if this deal will get over the line, obviously. The Bournemouth forward spent last season on loan with Swansea. He's since seen his contract with Bournemouth expiring and plenty of championship clubs have been sniffing around, but it appears as if Sheffield Wednesday have won the race for the 29-year-old. Now, Lowe is a player who can blow a little bit hot and cold, I think it's fair to say, especially at this stage of his career. But when he is on it, he absolutely can be a game changer at championship level. Nine goals and three assists was a reasonable return for him at Swansea last season, I thought. He can play anywhere across the forward line as well, so I'd imagine would be a nice option for Danny Roll next season. Sorry, Cabot, another player who is being linked with Sheffield Wednesday as they're looking to continue to bolster their forward line. Currently playing for Las Palmas in Spain. Obviously, championship fans have seen him at this level previously from his loan spell with Cardiff back in 2023. Decent finisher, I thought, during his spell in the championship. Scored eight goals and 17 appearances for Cardiff previously. Watford are interested in signing QPR fullback Kenneth Powell. For me, the Dutch fullback was one of QPR's most consistent performers last season, featured in 44 championship matches, scored four goals and got one assist during that time. It is worth flagging up with this transfer that he only has one year remaining on his deal with QPR and this will be an opportunity to flip a profit for a player who ultimately joined the club as a free transfer. With that being said, whenever I've watched him, I've always been quite impressed really. I think Watford would be getting a really good player if they managed to get this deal over the line. But with one year left in his contract, it would be interesting to see what sort of price range we're talking for this kind of deal. Cardiff attacking midfielder Ruben Colwell is continuing to attract interest from the Premier League with Ipswich being the latest club interested in the Welsh playmaker. Very naturally gifted player, still feels as if we're waiting for that first proper outstanding season where he really announces himself to the championship. The majority of his games last season did come from the bench 14 starts and 22 appearances as a sub clearly a very naturally gifted player though and definitely a player who i think most would agree 
there's more to come from him. Millwall forward Tom Bradshaw is reportedly attracting interest from a few championship clubs and Cardiff are one of the sides who have inquired about the 31 year old's availability. He is going into the final year of his contract at Millwall so if the club does want to cash in this summer is probably the perfect time. Now in saying that Millwall in some ways probably did miss the ideal time to cash in on Bradshaw. That would have been a couple seasons ago after he just bagged 17 goals in the championship. Wasn't quite as prolific last time around though only scored four goals still though I think would make a decent option for a number of championship clubs certainly as that secondary striker Millwall have reportedly lodged a bid for Notts County forward Macaulay Langstaff the 27 year old is one of the most prolific players playing in the EFL right now scored 28 goals for Notts County in League 2 last season but it's not only Millwall who do hold an interest in him multiple other championship and League 1 clubs are also interested he's a really tough one to judge really because he's 27 year old and during his career so far has never played above League 2 level but his strike right now over the last three seasons is absolutely off the charts. In the last three seasons the guy scored 103 goals for both Gateshead and Notts County which is absolutely ridiculous. With those sorts of scoring figures it's no wonder that multiple League 1 and Championship clubs are willing to take a punt on him. Looks as though Leeds United midfielder Darko Giabi will be rejoining Plymouth Argyle on loan for next season. Spent a short stint on loan at home park last year but ultimately that loan spell had to be cut short because of injury. Now recovering from that another loan spell will probably work out best for all parties. Preston are now being linked with a move for Barnsley midfielder Adam Phillips. Now we've still not got any clarity on the Alan Brown contract situation but I think most North End fans would agree that the longer this has continued to rumble on for the less likely he is to stick around. So Preston looking into alternatives in this position it does look as if Phillips has been sounded out as one of our latest targets. You can certainly understand why North End would be interested. Phillips is a local lad to Preston for one, but also one of the best performing midfielders in League One over these past couple of seasons now. Good goal scoring midfielder for Barnsley, scored 12 goals and got six assists in League One last season. He's still under contract at Oakwell until 2026, with the club holding an option for an extra year in his deal as well. But in terms of replacing Brown and as far as goal scoring midfielders go, you won't get many better than Phillips at League One level. Definitely a player who looks good enough to make the step up to the championship. We've discussed him quite a few times on the channel so far, but Archie Gray continuing to attract interest from pretty much every club from around Europe right now. A whole host of Premier League sides are interested, including the likes of Chelsea, Tottenham, Arsenal, and most recently Brentford, who I've seen linked. A number of teams on the European stage have also been interested. Borussia Dortmund, one of the most prominent links. It has been claimed that Leeds will be looking for a minimum of 30 million to sell the teenager this summer and you'd imagine any deal that was to go through would have to include some pretty hefty sell-on clauses and things like that. But with the number of big profile players being linked away from Ellen Road right now, it does seem as if these next few weeks could be quite decisive in learning a little bit more about the futures of Gray, Somerville, Nonto just to name a few. Another Leeds player being linked with the exit door right now is Ilan Meslier, with recent reports linking the goalkeeper with a move to Marseille. Now he is an interesting one, it is worth noting he did win the Golden Glove in the Championship last season, and we definitely saw that uptrend in his performances compared to previously in the Premier League. But with that being said, I think there are still a few question marks over his head on a couple of key attributes. And if Leeds are to get the right sort of money for him, I do think he is the sort of player that is replaceable. And another goalkeeper who could be on the move this summer is Plymouth's Michael Cooper. Now, we previously reported that Plymouth had offered him a new contract, reportedly to become the club's highest ever earner. But he has reportedly turned down that deal, and now Plymouth are ready to cash in on the goalkeeper while they still can. He's set to go into the final year of his contract now. And no doubt there will be plenty of interest in the player of his quality and with his potential. It looks as though Jerry Yates is on his way to Derby County, joining from Swansea on a season-long loan. Now, fair to say that the move to Wales hasn't really worked out for Yates. They spent quite a bit of money on him, only scored eight goals for them in 41 appearances last season. Derby will be hoping that Yates is able to rekindle the sort of form he showcased previously at Blackpool. His last season at Blackpool being his most prolific in the Championship, where he scored 14 goals that season. Caden Jackson, another player who looks to be on his way to Derby, 
Derby County following his release from Ipswich Town this summer. The 30 year old didn't really feature that prominently for the Tractor Boys during their promotion season last time around. Made 9 starts in the championship and then 20 appearances from the bench. Got 3 goals and 3 assists during that time. Joining a club like Derby you'd imagine he'd be able to play a more prominent role in that side next season. It looks as though a deal is in the works for Liam Miller to join Sheffield United and it's absolutely typical that on the first game week of the season Sheffield United travel to Deepdale so Miller will get the opportunity to potentially make his debut for the Blades against Preston where he spent last season on loan. I do really rate Liam Miller, thought he was really entertaining for North End last season, five goals and five assists, played the majority of the season as a wing back but Miller's made it quite clear in interviews and things like that that he wants to play further up the pitch as an out and out winger so from a Sheffield United point of view it'll be interesting to see what sort of system they actually go for next season. Predominantly from Wilder's time it has been a three or five at the back however you look at it but potentially with someone like Miller coming in there could be a bit of a tweak to the formation for next season. Well guys there you have it that will now wrap it up for today's video thank you very much for tuning in plenty to go over in today's video with how much is going on in the championship right now as we've not done one of these for a while there was quite a lot to catch up on and I'm sure we've missed out plenty of rumours too so if you're not already make sure to stay subscribed to the channel and stay tuned where we will have these regular updates coming out over these next few weeks and months but Apart from that, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.